My name is Joel Conkling. I'm a product manager for Earth Engine. Earth Engine is the uh, petabyte scale processing platform for geospatial data at Google. Uh, used by a wide range of industries, we've been developing it over the last 10 years. And I'm excited to tell you a little bit about it and show you a few demos that will illustrate some of what it can do. So when we think about Earth Engine, we think about two things. One is it's a massive uh, data catalog with open data from satellite imagery and many others uh, and the computation platform where you can analyze that data uh, in a variety of different ways to, to meet your use cases. Uh, we see users from agriculture industry, forestry industry, uh, oil and gas, natural resources, and a wide variety of others. And we'll go through a use case here in a second. And we'll do that through the lens of an agriculture use case. So imagine you're working at a company. You have a customer who's a farmer in Arizona, and he wants to know how his agricultural fields are doing. Maybe he's farming corn, wheat, soy, something like that. Um, and we're going to go through a use case that shows how that works in Earth Engine. I mentioned the Earth Engine data catalog. It's about 500 data sets of geospatial data, uh, 30 petabytes and growing, with a wide range of data types, from climate and weather data, imagery and radar data, uh, geophysical, socioeconomic, air quality data, and many more. You can bring your own data to Earth Engine as well. So if you're doing analysis where you like open data and your own data, that's easy to do. Um, and what that does is it lets you get started faster. So instead of figuring out what data you need, where do you find it, how do you download it, how do you pre-process it, what you can do with Earth Engine is just identify that data in the catalog and start, start your work, start your hypothesis. And so I'm going to go to a demo right now, which will show us uh, a little bit about how that works. So here with five lines of code there in the middle of the screen, uh, we've, we've done some, uh, pulled some data in for analysis. The first line identifies the data set. The second line says, you know, what date do we want to look at? Here on the third line, we're doing some uh, visualization parameters, adding it to the map, and telling it what part of the map to, to show. I hit run, and you can see this data set. So this is Landsat 8. It's a satellite imagery program run by the US government. Uh, it covers the globe every 16 days. We've asked it for one day. And you can see the path of the satellite from uh, over the course of that day. So we haven't asked much of Earth Engine yet uh, in terms of computation. But when you do start to do computation, you often start in the code editor, what we call the code editor. And here at the top in the middle is where you write your script. Um, Right above that, there's a run button, which I used just now, which gives you the ability to run calculations in Earth Engine. And then you can look at your results on top of the map, either here at the bottom, or if you click somewhere on the map, you can see the results in the top right. You also have access to all of your scripts, all of your data, and documentation about how to use Earth Engine in the top left panel there. Uh, in addition to the code editor environment, we also have programming APIs. Uh, you can use those programming APIs in Jupyter, Colab notebooks, uh, environments like that, um, or pull data into your GCP workflows uh, with the APIs as well. I'm going to go through a series of, uh, of additional demos here where we'll start to answer that question for the farmer, how are my fields doing this year? So the first thing I'll do is show you what it looks like when you pull in uh, 16 days of data which should give us pretty full coverage of the United States and the whole globe. So that's, that's given the Landsat satellite time to, to cover the entire globe. As a, you know, someone who's working to answer questions for a farmer, you might care about a longer time series than that. So I'll make this a six month time series. And you can hit run there. And so again, with relatively few lines of code, not that much work to do. You're pulling in data from uh, you know, six months' worth of Landsat, uh, hundreds of gigabytes of data uh, is at your fingertips. And the Landsat you know, catalog itself goes back 30 or 40 years, so you can go way, way farther back in, in history than that. So we've also got this median value here, uh, which is basically looking at over six months, you've got 12 images for each part of the, each part of the planet. It's looking at the median value for each of the bands 
in that image. Um, it turns out that clouds are highly reflective. So if you want to find clouds, you hit change median to max. And once that comes up, you'll see that there are clouds almost everywhere over the United States at some point during that six-month period. A quick and easy way to mask out clouds, which is a more common thing to do, is you change that median to a min and run that. And you've got a, a decent cloud-free mosaic of the United States or anywhere on the globe. Um, again, you know, pretty simple and easy to do in Earth Engine. Not that much work. In the agriculture space, you care how well is your vegetation doing, how healthy is your vegetation. And one common way of doing that is with the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI. It's a pretty simple calculation. We start with the same code that we had before to bring that imagery in. Define a function, add NDVI, use existing Earth Engine operators uh, to, to do that calculation. It's you know, one band minus another divided by one band plus another. Add the results to the image that you're working on. And then here you map that across all the imagery in your, uh, in your collection. Uh, define the palette, add it to the map, you know, pick what part of the map you want to show. And in this case, I'm going to show uh, part of Arizona where there's some agricultural fields. And hit run. And that'll start pulling in NDVI data on top of some imagery data. So what that NDVI is showing is that you get higher values. It goes to darker green. And those dark green values re uh, register for uh, lots where areas where there's lots of vegetation. You can also in, uh, move the transparency sliders up and down to get a sense of what's behind that imagery. Uh, you can toggle the la layers on and off. Uh, so a variety of things you can do to sort of inspect the data. But with a few more lines of code, we can do a lot more. And here we're, we're again starting with that same base of code that we had in the previous example, adding a, uh, a little bit of UI on top of that. In this case, we're adding a map uh, and a label on uh, one side, a map and a label on the other side, uh, linking those two maps with a function called linker, and adding a split panel on top of that. So with a few more lines of code, now you're able to go into Earth Engine and scroll back and forth and see, you know, NDVI and how that relates to the imagery underneath. So a pretty useful tool for analyzing that data. And again, as a, you know, a farmer, you might want to care, you might care a lot about how that uh, data is changing over time. So in this code, uh, I've added a, another panel at the bottom uh, with this, this code here. And uh, added a series uh, chart to that panel. And so when I click on the map, that's going to show me the NDVI over time uh, with you know, that 0 to 1 range where NDVI uh, is bounded. And you can see that, generally speaking, for this farmer overall in 2018, the NDVI looks pretty good. In July 18th, it looks like there was probably a cloud over there, over the, uh, over the farm. So that's why that's showing as a low number. The last demo I have here is going to run a comparison, just adding another time series chart, running a comparison between 2017 and 2018. So as that comes up, we'll have NDVI for 2017 on the left-hand side, NDVI for 2018 on the right-hand side, and we'll, we'll start to see comparisons between the two data sets. And that'll start to give us an answer of, of how healthy are the fields, how much vegetation is on those fields. Uh, one year versus another. And so again, clicking on that same, roughly that same spot and looking at the results, we can see that the NDVI in 2018 at the bottom here was higher for most of the year than it was in 2017. So this is all using data that's in the public catalog. You can bring your own data into this as well. Um, and using uh, components that are easily available in Earth Engine uh, to let you inspect that data in various ways. So going back into the slides, so we've spent a lot of time, a few minutes, in the code editor, which is where we do interactive analysis. Uh, we've started to get a simple answer for one farmer 
Uh, if you want to do that at scale, uh, that's where you start using uh, Earth Engine's batch capability. So that allows you to scale globally. Say you've got thousands of farmers that you're serving uh, around the world. Uh, it lets you automate runs. It lets you uh, basically take advantage of Earth Engine's uh, parallel computing architecture. And on the right here, we've got an example from not the agriculture space, but from uh, work that we did with the European JRC, Joint Research Center, uh, where they wanted to track surface water over the course of 30 years, you know, where surface water had been changing over 30 years. Uh, ended up being 10 million hours of computation. Uh, we put 10,000 CPUs against it, which allowed the computation to finish in less than two days. Uh, so you know, when you really want to run a big job, Earth Engine can, can help with that. And if you want to build Earth Engine analysis into an app, uh, into a web page, into a mobile app, uh, Earth Engine APIs allow you to do that. It gives your users the ability to uh, customize their data, customize their, the answers that they want, um, and you know, basically get a lot of the value and power of Earth Engine without writing code editor code themselves. Um, so that's a, another feature where, where Earth Engine can help you scale your analysis, have greater impact with your analysis, help it reach more and more of your users in a way that makes sense. So this is my last slide. If you are interested in Earth Engine, you think it might be able to help you solve some of your problems faster, you can go to earthengine.google.com, uh, click sign up, and Earth Engine's free to evaluate, and you can start kicking the tires, start using the code editor, the APIs, whatever makes sense to you, and take it from there. That's all I have. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Appreciate you listening, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs>